Today I'm going to show you how to create this procedural stained glass shader. I've got it on a couple different spheres here. Looks pretty neat how you can see the back through the front there, the transparency. I've also got it on some planes with some colorful patterns like this one and this one here. And then I also set it up so I could put an image like this flower and create some stained glass out of that image. And do the same thing with this tree image here. Turn it into stained glass. So I'll show you how I did that. To set up our scene, let's get rid of that cube and bring in a plane. I'm going to change the entire middle screen to my shader editor, and let's get that material that was on our cube and put it on our plane. Hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right, and I'm going to change the top right area to my 3D viewport. Zoom in a little bit and scroll across the top and uh, turn off these overlays so you can see things a little bit better. Hold down Z and move your mouse up. Go into rendered mode. So the basis of this pattern is going to be two Voronoi textures. I'm going to bring those in here, just duplicate that. And this top one I'm going to change to distance to edge. I'm going to bring in a value node here to synchronize the scales, because both of those need to be the same value. Plug those both into scale and uh, change this to 15. Duplicate this value node, and uh, I'm going to plug the same thing into the randomness. Same kind of thing, they just need to be synced up. I'm going to change this value to 1. Let's take a look at these Voronois and see what they're doing. This top one, the distance to edge, you know, you can see it's just this scale-like pattern. And this bottom one, uh, we actually don't want to use the distance. We can use either use color or position. And color is the one that allows us to put our, you know, just random assortment of colors or whatever colors we want. And position is the one that actually allows us to put an image in there and turn that into stained glass. But I'm going to start with color for now. And we're actually going to bring in a color ramp for this Voronoi texture and plug this in there, a little too close. Plug that in there and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set this black as is. Let's take a look at that one. We're going to leave that black at zero, but we're going to bring this white one way down so that we get rid of that gradient that was there. When we move it up, you see, you see this gradient here? If you move this down, get rid of that gradient. We're going to put this at 0 0.055. Then let's go ahead and mix these two. I'm going to bring in a mix RGB. Just place it here so that this color ramp goes into color one. Then we're going to run color into color two there. Let's see what's going on. We can see it kind of looks like stained glass a little bit. We can do this mix a little bit better though. Let's change it to multiply. Let's change this factor to one. It looks much better already. I'm going to move this principal BSDF out of the way. We're going to use it in a bit here. I think what I'm going to do is let's move these value nodes a little higher. And I'm going to hit this control T shortcut with that Voronoi highlighted to bring up the texture coordinate and mapping node. And let's just make sure the vector is plugged into both of these guys here. And we'll just leave it plugged into generated. I found that was the best solution uh, so far. Let's run all of this into a glass shader. Let's bring that in and place it here. And control shift or control shift left click on that guy to get the preview working correctly. You can see it's uh, quite dark there. And uh, I'm actually going to change out the lighting. Instead of the light, I'm going to scroll across, turn on these overlays for a second here. And just uh, scroll out so I can see this light. Just get rid of it. I'm going to turn off these overlays, go back to 7, and uh, which is top view, and just hit the period on the bottom right of your keyboard that centers it. And uh, let's go to World Properties. We're going to change see this uh, color and the yellow circle here we're going to click on that and go to environment texture then go to open and you just need to find where you've placed any HDRIs you have uh, check out HDRI Haven there's a lot of free ones there and I'm just going to choose a random outdoor one here click on that guy and it just lights the scene with your HDRI I'm going to come down here and go to um, I just realized this setting is an is so I just realized this setting isn't available on EV at least not in the same spot you can change it but I just can't remember where it is and our end product is going to be in cycles so let's switch over to the cycles engine here and if you have a GPU available go ahead and switch to that as well I'm going to come down here to the world properties again and now we can see ray visibility there and where it says camera we can click that off Actually, let's turn that back on. So I just want to show you. You can see the HDRI in the background here, but if I click off camera, that all disappears, but it continues to light our scene. So it's just a handy way of doing lighting. Right now, our whole object is glass, but we really only want the glass pieces to be glass. So that's where our principled BSDF comes in. Let's go ahead and mix that with our glass shader. 
I'm going to plug this in right here. And I'm going to plug this in actually in the top socket. And the glass shader is going to be in the bottom. Because we can actually use this right here to mix them both together. If I plug this into the factor, we can see now these white areas in the middle are controlled by this color right here. So we could change that to whatever we wanted. Let's just change it back to white because what I want to do is bring in a color ramp to uh, to set that color. Let's just plug that in here. Then I'm going to bring in a noise texture and place this here. Zoom in a bit and plug this into the factor there. Then let's uh, flip this around and this bottom color, let's set it to like a medium brown. Something like this here. So if we look at this, we can see it's kind of a patchy, you know, pattern here. We could uh, adjust that so it shows up more, but this is just kind of a subtle way to do a variation in texture there for the bits in the middle. Let's go ahead and change this metallic value to one. Why not? Let's take a look at varying the shape of these lines in the middle of the glass panels. You know, right now they're very straight. So why don't we vary that a little bit by bringing in a noise texture and just placing it right before that mapping node. You can see things have gotten a little extreme. So let's bring in a mix RGB, place it right afterwards, and run generated into color 2 as well. And now the factor on this node is effectively a controller for how much influence this noise texture has on the overall texture coming after it. So I'm going to set this pretty high actually at 0.99. I'm going to set this noise texture at 10 for the scale and leave everything else as is. It's a pretty subtle effect, but it does change the shape slightly there. And I want some smaller shape uh, variances as well. So I'm going to duplicate that noise texture and this mix RGB and just set them up like this and plug generate it into color 2 of that second mix RGB as well. Then let's come over here to the scale. Let's change this to something way higher to like 60. Let's change this to 0.9. Now if we zoom in, you can kind of see there's a little bit of squiggly variation there. It's not too extreme, but it is something just to break it up a little bit. So, so far we've got a, you know, a pretty interesting thing going here. Let's talk about how we might control it before we go any further. Um, this value node up here, the one we set to 15, if we wanted these pieces smaller, we could set that to something higher like 20, just like this. We can see, you know, same kind of pattern hasn't really changed, but it's gotten smaller. And this random note here, if we set this low, then we see we've just got this um, very straight kind of tile setup. So this is actually meant to be between 0 and 1. So we set that at 0, and that's the lowest it can go. If we set it at 1 or higher, it's just that same pattern there. So I'll just set that at 1. Um, so that's basically how you control this. I'm going to go back to 15 there, and that's pretty good. And what this model is missing is uh, some bump information. You know, if we look at it from the side, it looks cool, but uh, we don't see, you know, any bump there. First thing I'll do to work towards creating that bump information, uh, let's move this over here a little bit. And let's bring in a bump node. So this is something that we can just put here. This is going to actually plug into the normal on the glass there. And I can just bring in a noise texture, place it here, then bring in a color ramp, place it here. And let's run the factor into that color ramp. And then this color ramp data is going to go into that height there we can see immediately it changes. Now I've got kind of this bump information. It's kind of interesting. If we move this scale up or down, it changes the size there. So if we want it smaller, we change this to something higher like 10, just like this. See, it's a little smaller. I think 10 looks pretty good. Then I'm going to change this white value here. If I bring it down to gray, this effect gets a little more subtle. So I'm going to bring it down to 0.4, just like that. We can see the bump is a little less exaggerated. And finally, this distance is a number I'm going to change as well. I'm going to change this to point, uh, let's go 0 0.01, just like that. So now it's much more subtle. The second thing I can do to create a bit more bump information is uh, I'm going to duplicate this color ramp with Control shift d and that keeps it attached to this Voronoi here. I'm just going to flip these around here, because we can see it's black there, and the white would be pushed out if we had this one right here. So I'm going to flip these around here, bring the white to the bottom, and I'm going to change this black position to 0 0.055, which is the same as we had it up here. So now these are just opposite, you know, instead of black lines, it's white lines. And I'm going to duplicate this bump node and put it right here and feed the color into height there. So if you look at this, we can see now the bump information is pushing up those areas just in between the glass panels. And I'm going to feed this into the normal right here. So now these are both added together. You can't really see the first effect as much. It's a little bit more subtle. But you can see it in the end product anyways here. If we click on this uh, mix shader, you can see it's got both 
of the bump information showing together there. Let's make sure to plug this normal into the normal on this principled BSDF as well. And uh, what I want to do next is actually add some actual displacement. So let's go ahead to the top of this here. Let's let's come out of rendered mode. This will be a little easier. Let's come over to the, here the overlays and just turn these two back on so we can see what's going on. I'm going to tab into edit mode and hit W to subdivide. Or that might be right click. I just uh, have my settings as they kind of used to be. So then let's change these subdivisions to 25 there. That should be enough. You could make it more if you wanted for more detail, but I think this looks good enough here. So let's go back into rendered mode and turn off these overlays here. For the displacement, let's use the same color we used for the color ramp, rather, we used for the bump. But I'm going to duplicate it just because if we want to change that bump, we don't want to affect the displacement and vice versa. It's just nice to have a separate controller for each one. So let's go ahead and bring in a displacement node here and run the color into the height. And we can run this right into the material output displacement right over here. And nothing's happened yet. I'm going to view this from the side here. We can see it's not doing anything. We need to come over here to the material properties uh, right here and go to settings. And then we'll go down to where it says displacement bump only. We're going to change that to displacement and bump. So we can uh, see it's, it's kind of gone crazy. And we want to change the scale to 0.02 something like that. Let's view this from the top. Um, there's still a couple things that look a little weird. First of all, it's still got flat shading. Let's change this to smooth shading. Uh, that's the context menu, either W or right click to get that. And then let's add a subsurf modifier on it as well. Let's change this to 2, just like that. And um, yeah, that's already looking a lot better there. So it's starting to look like some nice stained glass there for us. So it's possible to have different seeds of this pattern as well. And we can do that by duplicating this value node here. Let's change this to 0. And I'm going to open these up to 4D instead of 3D. And that gives you an extra slot here, which is this W value. And that's your seed. So I'm going to plug 0 into both of those guys here. And if we change this value here, you see we get this different pattern. But it's the same scale, same randomness is just a different variation on those parameters so that's kind of useful. Let's talk about if we wanted to put our own image in here. I'm going to move both of these nodes up here just so we can see this a little bit more clearly. That's the Voronoi F1 Euclidean and this Multiply Mix node. I'm just going to make two separations here because we're going to make a spot right here where we can put an image texture. We've got this nice flower picture here it's actually resized to be a square because I found this works a little bit better when you've got a square texture. Because it's coming out of generated, if I were to resize this image or this mapping node, then both of these Voronoi's would be affected and it wouldn't kind of, it would tile the glass panels in a weird way, like stretched. So this is the workaround I've got so far. You know, it's not perfect, but this seems to work pretty well. I'm just going to put this picture right here. And what this does is it creates a flower for us. So let's look at that from the top. And this needs to be coming out of position. I forgot that. That kind of just gives us a color palette similar to the flower. But this gives us the actual flower texture there. And if we wanted, we could come over here to the value and we could change this to like 10, get some bigger panels, and change this seed value if we wanted a different image with the same parameters there. Let's take a look at adding this to a sphere as well. So uh, I'm just going to turn on these overlays again. Let's come out of rendered mode, go into solid mode. I'm going to hide this plane and let's bring in a cube. And I'm going to hit control 4. And let's go ahead and add a cast modifier as well. That control 4 added a subsurf modifier. And let's change this to 4 for the render as well. For this factor on the cast, let's change it to 1. That just makes it a perfect sphere. And let's shade smooth as well. And let's add that material to the cube, which is now a sphere. Let's go back into rendered mode and turn off these overlays. Yeah, there we go. We've got our uh, our sphere now. We can change the settings the same as before. If we change this to five, be much larger panels. Looks kind of interesting though. That's kind of cool. Let's also talk about what if we wanted one or two or three colors scattered randomly across this. So I'm just going to skip over this image texture. Just remove that. And uh, we won't worry about that. Oh, I won't remove it altogether. Just put it over here. And now uh, let's plug color into this guy right here. 
and we've got that random color assortment again, just that kind of rainbow color. This time I'm going to bring in a color ramp here. We can see it just changes it to shades of gray. So I'm just going to change this number to 10, that value number. Give us bigger panels to work with. And now we can change each of these flags to a different color. Let's try, you know, this orange one. And then this other one here, uh, how about, make sure I select it. How about we'll just go something like blue just like that. So now we've got kind of two colors. If you wanted just those two colors, we could go constant just like this and then move this down to uh, around 0.5. That just gives us those two colors. If we wanted a third color, we just add a third flag here. Why don't we change this to kind of a green color, just like that. And then move this over here. And, you know, the size of the area here will determine how many of those panels you have. So if you want a bias towards one color, just make that size a lot bigger. So that's it. Hope you're able to understand everything I was doing. And if you're confused about anything, feel free to ask any questions you might have. Thanks for watching.